comes out of the idea that there has never been just one photographic method, one photographic aesthetic, one photographic technique. And so I was interested in looking at what the experimental urge was in photography, in photographs taken by artists since the 1970s. What happens to a photograph, say, when you paint on it in a way that is not in relationship to the photographic space itself? Or what happens to the photograph when you pay no attention to the normal rules of photography and expose film in whatever way you want, develop everything in whatever way you want, and then draw and paint on the photograph so there's no camera involved at all. Someone like Matthew Brand, who makes landscape photographs of bodies of water and then collects the water from the lake that he's just photographed, takes it back to his studio, and after the photograph has been developed and fixed, he then immerses the fixed photograph in the lake water and he may leave it in there for days or weeks or even months. And what it starts to do, as you can see here, is it starts to have a chemical reaction because of whatever's in the water. I think one of the people who's been instrumental in the whole notion of experimentation in photography is James Welling. In this series of photographs, he photographed uh, Philip Johnson's glass house um, in Connecticut. And because it is all glass, um, he really began to think of it as a large lens or a large glass sculpture. And so he had already been doing experiments with color um, putting different color filters in front of the lens to see how he could change the photograph and other kinds of filters, clear filters, to refract the light in different kinds of ways. And he's been very influential to younger artists. His work is very broad and that broadening, I think, is really what's fascinating and wonderful about what's going on today.